Okay, first up. Okay, this is such a weird thing, but I just thought it was really useful for maybe some weird purposes. So this is like, you know, you have a KVM and it's like a smart switch that lets you like share one keyboard and mouse and monitor with two computers. Well, imagine if you had that, but it was only a USB port and it was totally mechanical. So this is, it's, it's a weird thing, right? It's got, um, yeah, so here's a good, a good image. So it's got two USB-A plugs and they can go into, no, uh, yeah. Uh, they got two USB-A plugs, and um, each one can plug into a computer, and then you can plug in one peripheral device into that socket, and then the switch, I know it says like on off, it's like one zero, but what it really is, it switches between the two. What is this used for? So for me, I actually was using this for testers, so I would like have a board plugged into a Raspberry Pi, and then I wanted to like plug it into my computer, and I'd be kind of like plugging it back and forth. Um, with this, I just use the switch. Now, one thing I'll say is this is, it's a, it's a little bit of a hacky way of doing it. So power is connected through to both boards. So just, like, that's not usually not a problem. USB ports don't usually mind having some back power. Um, the switch is only uh, for the two data lines. So it's, it's a, you know, dual pole, double throw, whatever switch. So it's, it's only the, um, it's only the two data lines that are swapped over. That said, um, you know, it does work. Um, it, it's, it's funky, it's weird, but I think, you know, it's, it's not, I wouldn't put it into like a finished product, but for R&D or for some situation where you're like, look, I really just want to connect one Arduino between two computers or something um, real fast, you know, I, I'd feel okay saying like, hey, this is a good little development tool for that. So I don't know what I call it, like a micro KVM, a, a USB switcher, something like that. Okay, next up. Okay, next up, so while, while this is setting up, I'm going to plug in this. This is the, um, the, oh, my goodness, I actually don't remember the name of it. It's this Raspberry Pi case, um, and it's the, it's the pro model of the Pi case, um, and it's designed for the Raspberry Pi 4, although I think you can fit other Raspberry Pis in it, and an official Raspberry Pi 7-inch um, monitor. So the monitor you see here, it doesn't come with it. If you have a Raspberry Pi, you see the Raspberry Pi 4 plugged in on the left there. The seven inch monitor, um, you connect them together, you put them into the case, and um, you basically have your own like all in one Raspberry Pi enclosure um, with a touch screen and it's like a really beautiful, nice display and case with a camera in the front. So you can ha even have it like, you can make your own little like a uh, um, camera, web app, web camera type like interface thing um, where you have like video, you know, transmitting over the camera, over the display, going back and forth. So that's kind of the upgrade is it has the, the camera slot and um, the USB port comes out for power, but the SD card is not, is not exposed so people can't rip it out. So this would be like a little micro kiosk maybe. Um, so let's go to the overhead and I'll show it off. So this is kind of nice. So um, you've got here the the touch screen, so it's I'm focus that in a little bit. Yeah. It's so, so bright, so it's a little confused. Yeah. But um, you've got the seven inch monitor here, and it's a touch screen. Like you can see, I, I can touch and select stuff. Um, USB and Ethernet for the um, Raspberry Pi four on the back. Um, this is a really nice um, metal bottom, so it's a little bit heavy. Uh, hinge so you can hinge this and it's adjustable and then you, you screw it in place um, another nice uh, extra it comes with a fan you can use to cool down uh, the insides and there's like lots of little mounting holes on the back uh, with venting this is where the USB comes out so there's a little USB if you if you you know we go back to the contents you'll see there's a little USB adapter thingy so that the USB comes out nicely on the side and inside it gets routed into the power port um, but basically, you know, the, it's, the, it's the camera slot that makes this kind of special. So you can mount a Raspberry Pi camera here and then, you know, use it as like a, like I said, like a kiosk with a webcam for like AV interfacing or like a, a mini video station type project. So, um, yeah, if you go here. So you can see it comes with the hardware and the cables uh, to route internally all the camera. And then there's hardware as well for um, mounting all the pieces uh, together. So you do have to put it together. Uh, it doesn't come with a Raspberry Pi 4 or the display, so you just have to uh, make sure you grab one of those. But it does come with the fan. Okay, next up. 
Um, next up, we've updated our 2.13 inch uh, tricolor e ink displays. Um, it's very similar to the previous e ink displays. You can see here, it shows stuff even when it's not powered. It's got an SD card slot built in RAM, um, so you can use it with everything from Arduino Uno up to like a Raspberry Pi. Uh, we've got e ink libraries for Python, CircuitPython, and Arduino. Um, what's nice about this is we've updated it to be higher resolution. It's now 250 by 122. Uh, tricolor pixels, so I, you know, I don't remember the previous resolution. I think it was like 200 by 100 or something. So you got a little bit of a boost in resolution, so you get more pixels. Uh, with that, the chipset has changed slightly. It's now the SSD 1680. So um, it is a new product ID because you can't reuse the exact same code as before. Um, you do need to uh, recompile the code um, for the new SSD 1680 chipset. This is unfortunately a thing about e-ink displays that the chipsets keep changing um for the user it doesn't matter but just the for the developer they will have to recompile it all right next up i think might be one of, besides that little tiny keyboard that we showed during the python on hardware section this might be either the cutest or second cutest thing we showed tonight this is so cute um this is a miniature hot plate it's a miniature hot plate and, it is, it's way smaller than you think and before yeah i was gonna say so yeah you can look at these photos and just be like well, well is how it, big is it is it the size I mean, of a refrigerator is it like a power supply or is it like it's yeah. really small so what board is that that you have so this is like a sort of a generic okay uh, so it's like a little stem size board. stem ut board okay, so, so look this how, is look it this tiny it's very 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 tiny. very small and um here i'll i'll, I'll are you gonna actually it. do it yeah, I thought I'd just plug it in real fast. Okay, so you know what we can do is we can try to angle this a little bit here. Yeah. So we can see. Well, yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd quickly show it. So there, there's some buttons on the back. So I'll just show the user interface. There's A and B buttons so that, that you can you can check the manual, which I yeah. totally haven't read yet. If you want to make a cutie pie factory, yeah. this is how you do it's it. It's basically, if your boards are about one inch by one inch, uh, this is perfect for you. So it's booting up. It's got a little OLED display. This is by Minware. They make a lot of um, really high-end tools. They have, like, smart tweezers, and um, uh, they have the, uh, yeah, the smart tweezers we just put in. They have the smart soldering iron. No, is it having, is it doing the thing? Maybe my power supply isn't good enough. Hold on. Let's try again. It was just working. Okay, there you go. I think I just wasn't, uh, I didn't plug it in all the way. way. Okay, so don't forget to plug in the USB all the way. Uh, so there's settings, and then there's heat up. Uh, so if I select heat up, uh, it'll heat. One of the things I thought was so adorable about this is this little LED. Um, it's a kind of a like indicator of what the temperature is. So as this heats up, and you see it's like 35, 36 degrees. Um, yeah, once you start using electronics on it, don't start melting s'mores on it, by the way. But yeah. um, if you're just going to make a s'more melter, yeah. Just can, s'more. Just s'mores. Don't, and, don't, inter, don't mix it with electronics. So as this is heating up, it's getting to like 60 degrees C, and you see it's turning yellow. So the um, the LED does warn you how hot it is. So this, you know, white, okay, like definitely dangerous. Uh, and then I think it gets to red when it's, when it's really hot. So... Yeah. Um, it works. It will reflow boards. Uh, yeah, you we know, did it live on Disco Lady Ada We did it live on Disco Lady Ada. Um, you know, it's it's for very small boards. But if you are making these small development kits, you're making like toe moves or whatever, or like, uh, you know, nanos, um, this this will do the job. And it heats up pretty fast. In about two minutes, uh, you'll get up to 240. It can do uh, leaded and lead-free. No problem. Yeah, someone said, oh, you just buy a bunch of these, put a sticker on it, start a Kickstarter, and it's your own like personal s'more device. Yes. Yeah. For s'more. That's the second product that you're gonna see later on that you saw first on a uh, electronics show. The, yeah. The screen, the reflective screen, and then the. Uh, okay, so I think what I'll do now that we've mini we've plate. seen it, I'll. Yeah, I can actually see the little smoke going off. Yeah, there's a little bit of smoke. I want to be careful because I don't want to damage this. Uh, yeah, and now it's red. Now it's red, so you can see the red light. So let me uh, I'm gonna zoom focus in. in. Do you want to zoom into it and show that it's like certain Well, I stuff? think I have to bring this out a little bit. Good. Let's bring it out. Bring and then down. focus. Yeah, I'll focus. Whoop, what did you do? I didn't do anything. Okay. Oh, man, it's, it, is, it might not. It's either like all or nothing today. Yeah, maybe. Uh, okay. I don't know if it doesn't like, maybe the heat's confusing it. Okay, 
So there you go. So um, as it gets up to 240, I can sort of poke poke the parts with this maybe. Let me see. Oh, I think I have to tell it I want to go even higher. Yeah, you can tell that it's uh, hot right now. It's definitely hot, though. One thing I should have done is probably uh, read the manual. But it's at 220, which is lead solder, but this is lead free. So I think I need it to, okay, now it's going up to 220, 225, 230. So you're going to actually start seeing stuff really melting here. Let me see if I can zoom in on it now that we're, I want, yeah. that we're in okay zoom in territory. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you can see it. Look, 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 look. You can see it going around the resistor there. See it melting? Yeah. Yeah, look. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how much this more. This is going. exciting. Yeah. So right, I, I do want to. I do want to. Yeah. I can't is... zoom in more, but live reworking. Yeah. So you can remove parts. Yeah. Very carefully. So we're gonna part off, and then while you're still doing, don't. Uh, I was gonna say you could see. I was going to show that it's red the underneath. The red LED? Yeah, so you can see that's when you got to be hot. careful, this is so hot. Yeah, it's, it's this, like... It's 250, so I'm going to unplug it and uh, be very careful. So just be just be super careful, because this thing is, like... It, it, it gets hot. I mean, it's small, but um, it's powerful. Yeah. It will go up to, uh, you know, 250, 260 degrees C. Uh, that will toast you, so... Don't yeah. do what I did. Don't, don't flick off parts with your it's finger. It's a terrible idea I to even that. try to do live demos with this stuff. Um, just ger Live demos in general. This is why no one does live demos. Don't do that. Um, but we did it, and we showed it to you, so it worked but out. But you can do it. But um, basically, I've, re I've reflowed like, little boards on it. Yeah. All right. Next up. Okay. Uh, next up, this is the revision. This is the AMG 8833. So um, we've had this thermal camera for a while. Uh, now the thermal camera just has a Stemma QT connector. So uh, you can plug and play it with any of our... Uh, Stemma QT um, uh, interface boards, including the Cyberdex we're about to show. Or, you know, if you've got um, a clue board, you can plug it in and then have, like, make a little, a little thermal camera. And what's nice is that um, for a while it was actually tough to get thermal cameras, but uh, it's starting to become a lot yeah. easier to pick them up now. So if you've been wondering, like, hey, how come I can't get thermal cameras? Uh, during COVID, it was, like, impossible to get I, them. Yeah. And I now think, they're starting to come back So again. we still do temperature screening every single day. Like, I know everyone's temperature at Adafruit. We, we have our teams work on that to make sure every day when folks come in, they don't have a fever. I do think that, um, you know, years from now or months from now, as people kind of look back at this pandemic, um, you know, the fever thing really didn't become a, a way to – determine if someone had it because it was asymptomatic. And I think one of the things um, that would have been better would have been a portable smell test, uh, believe it or not, where um, when you walked into a building, there was uh, a, f a few different scents. Like somebody with like a rotten milk and they're like, smell this? No, just a few different scents would be um, in the area. Like you would put your head just, you know, closest you do for a temperature sensor. But it would be like, what's the what's the smell? Because that seems to be, or or at the time, especially during peak, a lot of people lost their smell, and that would that would have been a way to say, okay, because temperature just didn't seem to be a thing. So that's why, long story short, we have more of these in stock. That's right. Maybe because everyone agreed with you now. Um, but yeah, so it's the same chip, the same schematic. Uh, it's actually even physically the same size. Uh, we did rearrange the pins a little bit to make them in our uh, Stemma QT standard, and of course they have the plug-and-play yeah. connectors on the end uh, to make easy thermal camera okay. projects. The stars of our show tonight, besides you, lady of the community, our customers, and our team here at Adafruit, are the Cyberdex. We had two of them. That's right. Although the Cyberdex bonnet was probably going to be in stock tomorrow, but if you're not watching this live, then it's probably in the store. Uh, so we've got two Cyberdeck bonnets. These are plug-in bores for the Raspberry Pi 400 uh, that have these really cool angled sensors. That's uh, angled. It's angled headers. Um, and the angled headers mean that when you plug them into the Raspberry Pi 400, uh, you get the display coming out at a jaunty angle. Um, if it was flat, it would stick out. You wouldn't see it. If it was completely upright, it would be not easy to see it either. But it's at like 30 degrees, which we uh, scientifically determined was the best angle. Um, so there's two versions. There's the bonnet version, and uh, we're showing it here with our um, OLED bonnet. You don't have to use it with the display. You can use it with, like, literally anything that's, like, mini Pi Zero hat-shaped. Um, but we happen to think the OLED was a good demo. It's got this beautiful silk screen by Phil B, shown here. And then... Um, you want to go back on? Yeah, um, because I'm still talking about the Cyberdeck bonnet. Um, it, it has mounting holes, so you could attach, you know, any, you know, again, uh, Pi Zero hat 
or fat or mini hats, you know, whatever you want to call them. And then um, there's connectors on the sides. So you get two GST pH connectors, these are two millimeter pitch connectors. You get power ground and then either pin 18 on the left or pin 13 on the right. And then there's two stem QT connectors above those. So if you want to like plug and play that thermal camera, for example, or our sensors or OLED displays or whatever, you get two connectors for I squared C on the cyber deck. So that's the cyber deck bonnet, right? So that's for the smaller boards. And then we have the cyber deck hat. Same thing, you get those connectors on it, JST SH and JST PH for connecting I squared C or other boards. Um, and then um, you've got uh, you know that 30 degree angled header. So it plugs in nicely into the Raspberry Pi. Um, and then here it is, for example, with a sense hat. So yeah. you know if it's a hat shaped thing, it plugs in quite nicely. Um, and again, it shows it at an angle. So if you want to use a sense hat with a Raspberry Pi 400, uh, which you know it has sensors and a display and you don't want to have it like dangling off a cable, you plug this in and then it kind of holds it up at a nice angle. So I've got a demo with it on my Pi 400. Um, so this is uh, the Pi 400 with the Cyberdeck bonnet plugged in right to the bottom here. And then um, you- yeah, If you want to see the angle. Yeah, the angle's kind of tough to show, yeah. but you can see it's- yeah, you can tell. Kind of coming up, so you see like the, it's a, it's actually an original Pi 1 hat. Um, and then it's, you can see the text very nicely while you're typing on it. So this is kind of my example of like, okay, I want to, uh, you know, hack a system by pinging it. Okay, I can do that. Um, I even did a, a thing where I wanted to, let's see if can links to Adafruit. I was like, okay, well, you, know, you can always put a graphic interface on it, but I thought it would be kind of fun uh, to show it with um, with text. Oh, too much. Back off. Okay. So you can even search for a cyber deck. So you can browse the internet. Maybe find the text version of this product. Hold on. I was just having fun with the links. Okay, here you go. So I can now go to the, the product page for the product on the product in text. That's right. Um, I'm gonna zoom out. So let me control X, quit, hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna quit. I still remember how to use links after like 20 years. And then uh, you can do, uh, you can also show, you know, animations and graphics. I got like a wallpaper to show just some, some you know, you can have it display stuff, GIFs, whatever. All of our examples already work because all it's doing is adapting the Raspberry Pi 400 to hold our existing hats and boards. Normally this would plug on top of a Raspberry Pi 4, but now you get it at this, again, nice jaunty angle. So maybe you want to go to the... Yeah, I was going to say, like, maybe we can see, yeah. I think this is the best way to show it. So, yeah, you see it's like... Yeah, it's there's other products out there, not from us, that, that go up and down. We wanted to make sure when we launched this, it had a really good angle. So this is yeah, very, it's super readable. It's really cool. It is super cyberdecky. Cyberdecky. So yeah. make your cyberdecks, or or just connect things to your Pi 400. Um, I think this is great. You know, we I, you know we tried a couple different angles. It does have a little bit of, of adjustability. You can like move it up and down by about five degrees, um, but it's very solid. And then of yeah. course you can use the accessory ports to uh, plug in other hardware. But I think like if you want to just make like a cool add-on for your you know it doesn't have to be a display. I personally like displays, but it can be almost anything. Yeah. Um, you get the bonnet and the hat, two versions. And uh, yeah, it'll just work with anything because all it does is bring all the pins out and up. Like it's all it does is a mechanical adapter. Yeah, if you're using a Pi 400, I think this is a good secondary display for like sensors. Um, you could do a lot of neat work on the screen and then look over at your little mini screen and see what the microcontroller stuff that you want to do. Yeah, I think this makes, doing. this is so much fun. I mean, you can have HDMI and OLEDs, or like I said, the Sense Hat, right? This is a common, yeah add-on for the Raspberry Pi, but how would you use it with the 400? I think this makes perfect sense because you can still use the buttons yeah. and the sensors. Yeah, visualizer. There's all sorts of things you can do. Yeah. And with that, it is new products.